We're going to get right into this sermon series. How many of you guys have been uh, enjoying All In? Uh, has it been challenging you? Uh, I'll tell you, it's been challenging me as well. And uh, uh, I, my prayer this morning was that, uh, that uh, through the Holy Spirit, that he would challenge each and every one of us uh, to, to, to just step a little bit deeper into the things that God has for us. And I, I, my prayer was this, as I was praying and preparing, my prayer was that, uh, that each and every one of us would understand the tremendous value uh, that you have in the kingdom of God. Now, you're valued as a person. I'm sure people love you. Uh, you're, you're of worth to, to those that, that depend on you. But so much more value uh, could be realized in our lives if we understand our purpose and really going all in uh, for God. And so this morning we're going to be talking about, and this might be a bad word, okay, we're going to be talking about all in in sacrifice and service. In sacrifice and in service. How many of you like that word sacrifice? I hate that word, right? <laughs> but it's a reality, and so God is calling us to be all in, in sacrifice, and in service to others. And this is the great news, is that God wants to use you. I'll say that one more time. You, you might feel like uh, you're useless. You might feel like uh, maybe your time has passed, but I'm here to tell you and declare to you that God wants to use you right where you're at. God can use you. And so uh, this, this, uh, this, this uh, thought or this concept about all in is really when a person commits everything that they have, time, talent, resources, energy, ingenuity, all these different things towards this common purpose. And we say, I'm going to be all in on this thing. Now, uh, have you ever seen someone that's all in on fishing? They're just like nuts about fishing, right? I mean, they're just, they're cleaning their poles and they're, you know, uh, uh, messing around with their gear or, or someone that's all in with golf, right? Like they just, they, they have the golf watch and they, uh, they're just all in. I mean, everything, their life is just, uh, is just uh, consumed by this thought. And really what we want to do is pivot from the things that are of this world and pivot towards the things that are eternal that will give us eternal reward. And so this, this, uh, this, this concept became very popular in uh, at about the 2000s. Many of you know this in Texas Hold'em. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you should, you should gamble or anything like that, but th that's where the concept came from, all right? And uh, as you know, this term means that you're going all in on this hand so you have full confidence that you have the right cards or you've bluffed everyone out enough to be able to go all in and to win that hand. And so this is, this is what it means. And uh, uh, it's defined this way. Uh, when, we've, uh, when, when, uh, uh, when we're fully committed or invested in a particular task, project, or situation, listen to this, with a sense of determination or risk-taking. When you're all in on something, you're, you're willing to take a risk. Have you ever experienced that in your life? Like, I'm all in on this thing. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going all in. And so this could be used in a, in a lot of different contexts. Uh, when someone says that they're all in, this implies that we're willing to devote all of our energy, all of our resources, all of our attention to achieving a particular goal or outcome, listen to this, without holding back or playing it safe. How many of us this morning would you say that you're kind of playing it safe a little bit? Like things are, things are very comfortable, uh, you, you, you have things like under control, you kind of, uh, I say this often, is that you kind of, you, you found your rhythm in life, and you're just kind of going through the motions, and I, I want to, I believe that God has called us to just step out a little bit further from that place to really experience uh, what God has for us in his fullness. Pastor Omar said this uh, last week, and I love this comment, he said that the gospel or the good news doesn't cost us anything. See, Jesus paid, paid the price. There, there's nothing you could do to add to it or take it away, okay? There's nothing you could do. Jesus paid for it all. And so the gospel, this good news, costs us nothing. Jesus paid for it. But it demands everything from us. The gospel is good news. It costs you nothing. But to commit and to be all in will demand everything in your life. See, it demands that we go all in and that we put everything that we have in God's hands, that we offer our lives up to him. And if we're not careful, we get stuck in this spiritual rut, this going through the motions. We're afraid that if we go all in on this Jesus thing or we go all in on this religious thing, that we're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on the fun. You're going to miss out on the party. You're going to miss out on all that this world has to offer. But this is the lie of this world. This is the lie of this world. See, the only thing that you'll miss out on is everything that God has to offer. That's the only thing you're going to miss out on. 
That everything that God has to offer, and this is, this is the truth, and this is the good news, that if we don't hold out on God, God won't hold out on us. I'll say that one more time, that if we don't hold out on God, if we go all in with God, God won't hold out on us. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord, this morning. I thank you for every single person that's here, and I pray, God, that you just continue to do your work. Father, we, we, we sense your Holy Spirit. We know by your word where two or three are gathered, you're here in our midst. And I pray, Father, that this concept of going all in, God, in, in service and sacrifice would really begin to germinate in our spirit and our minds, God. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through me as I declare your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, so the, the difference between a hero and a celebrity is the difference between Mother Teresa and Madonna. Right? The difference between a hero and a celebrity is the difference between Billy Idol and Billy Graham. Right? The difference between a hero and a celebrity is the difference between Stephen King and Martin Luther King. You understand what I'm saying? See, one's famous and the other one has made sacrifices for other people. One's a hero, and one's a celebrity. So what's the difference between heroes and celebrities? Is it talent? Is talent the, dif the, the differentiating factor between a hero and a celebrity? No, absolutely not. Uh, a, a hero or a celebrity can be talented or not. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It's not intelligence either. It's not persistence or grits. I mean, I, I, I believe that both of them show those characteristics. So what is it? What is the difference between a hero and a celebrity? And I propose to you this morning that the difference between a hero and a celebrity lies in sacrifice. You see, a, 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 a hero is willing to give up his own life, his own desires, his own needs in a moment, and sacrifice for someone else. See, there's a lot of people that are willing to sacrifice for themselves. Would you agree? You're willing to sacrifice uh, sleep or, or money or whatever it is for your own personal gain. As long as you know that something's coming back to you, uh, uh, we could sacrifice maybe just a little bit, right? And so we'll sacrifice for personal gain. We'll sacrifice for our own goals. And this is the truth. This is the truth. That nothing significant is ever accomplished without sacrifice. Now, one of my sports heroes, okay? Uh, uh, give me a moment. Let me, let me fan out, okay? So one of my sports heroes is Kobe Bryant. Any Kobe fans in here? I thought I was in the right room. Okay. So if you, if you ever hear stories about Kobe, you know that he sacrificed everything to be great at this one thing, which was basketball. And we appreciate it. It gave me 20 years of entertainment. Um, and, uh, uh, but this is, this is it, is that uh, whether, you see, whether you see people on the secular side or in, in the kingdom of God, the, the universal truth is that nothing significant is accomplished without sacrifice. If you're not sacrificing, I'll pose this to you, if you're not sacrificing in your life, it'll be difficult for you to do anything significant with it. Some of you guys are mad at me. See, some people will sacrifice for business. How many entrepreneurs in the house? We, we have plenty of them. Plenty of them, entrepreneurs. And so we'll sacrifice for business. You know, God has given you a dream and you're, you're going all in on that. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Others like Kobe Bryant will sacrifice to be, become a pro athlete. He, he, he wanted to be the greatest basketball player ever. And that was his aspiration, and that was his motivation, and he chased it down. And some would, some would suggest that he, actually, that he actually accomplished it. I would be one of those. All of you uh, Michael Jordan fans are uh, haters. <laughs> no, he's, he's pretty great, too. Listen, no one, no one gets to the Olympics. No one gets to the NFL, the Major League Baseball uh, League. No one gets there without great sacrifice. And to be number one in our field takes, takes complete sacrifice. If we want to be an expert or we want to be looked at as someone that, that's accomplished many things, we have to make these sacrifices. 
But in those areas in our lives where we make these sacrifices for the things of this world, we understand that it's for our own goals and for our own reasons. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't be driven, okay? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a driven uh, professional myself, and so uh, you should be driven for your own goals. But think about this. What makes a hero is that a hero sacrifices for other people. And see, deep inside of each and every one of us, I, I, would, uh, I would venture to say that deep inside of each and every one of us, we desire to make an impact in this world. Yes? You want to leave a legacy. You want to leave le- something behind to say, man, I, I, I made impact in this world. Now, you may not realize it. You may be here this morning. I saw a couple of heads nodding, and, and, and uh, they're with that. But maybe you're here this morning, and you don't really, maybe you're saying, you know, Pastor Isaac, I, I don't really have that sense. I mean, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I'm doing my thing. Um, I, I, you know, I don't mess with anybody. I don't bother anybody. I just want to do my thing. So you may not realize it, but it's inside of you. There's this desire or this pooling that there's more, that, I, that God has put something in me that I could offer to somebody else. Anybody else, anybody else have that feeling in, in, in their life that, man, I, I, I don't know. I just have this, this desire or this, this, this feeling. I can't put uh, really words to it, but it's this wanting or this desire to make a contribution with my life. That at the end of, at the end of your life, you can look at it and say that I've, made, I, I've left a mark, that I've made impact on this world, and maybe it's a little bit better because I was there. I think that's all of our prayer. And see, this is inside of us because God wired us this way. God wired us to give ourselves away. I was fortunate to be at a conference this past week, and uh, I I was there, and uh, there was several speakers, and there was this young man by the name of David Garibaldi, and uh, he's an artist. Actually, he's a uh, ex graffiti artist in Northern California, and uh, and and uh, it was it was it was pretty spectacular. A lot of entertainment, right? But he would he would paint these incredible paintings in like six minutes and he's like splattering paints all over the place and he's making you know making shapes out of nowhere and uh and and after every single one of his paintings he would dip his hand in paint and then he would like go up to the painting and like jump up and slap it and he says that uh every time he does that it's him leaving his mark so that people know that he was there and it it, it authenticates it and I was thinking this morning, I was thinking about that. There, there's this man that uh, he, was, uh, he was kind of like going the wrong way in his youth, but he found purpose and, and the passion kind of aligned together with what God had put in him. And now this man is traveling around the world raising money for under, underserviced communities uh, and, and those that are broken, co- broken communities. And he's raising millions and millions of dollars. And he's making his mark all over the world. And I thought about that and I thought, this is it, even in the secular world, that there's this desire to, to make their lives count for something more. I was so moved by that. I, I mean, personally, I've spent years frustrated trying to figure out what is it that I'm supposed to do with my life. Anybody else, anybody else out there at, at some point in your life, you're just like, Where, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go to school? Maybe if I go to school, that'll, you know, that'll help me out. And then two years into it, six months into it, maybe you're like, okay, this is not for me, and, 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 and you bounce. But there, there are those that actually go through and they complete it, four years. Maybe you're a graduate, whatever it is. And then you get to that point, you're just like, now what? I've I've done all these things, it's supposed to bring me fulfillment, it's supposed to bring me satisfaction, but I'm still lost. See, I've, I've, I've been there, I've I've tried a lot of different things to fulfill my life and to uh, satisfy this desire in my life with things outside of the kingdom of God, with things outside of the power of the Holy Spirit working without purpose in my life. And every single time I do, I come up short. Anybody else here this morning, maybe this morning you're just like, man, I, I'm trying to do the right thing, but I just, I just feel like I'm coming up short. I, I, feel like, I feel like I'm getting ripped off a little bit by, by this world. And we think that fulfillment comes from this personal gratification, but it's elusive. It's like a mirage. It's like we're waiting to get to this destiny, and once we get there, it's gone. Or it's just not as good as we thought it was going to be. And so what gives this gratification? What, what is it that will give us significance and give us the feeling of meaning and purpose in our lives? 
I propose to you that it's when you give your life away. See, God, God wired us to give our lives away, and God calls this ministry. I said God calls this ministry. And so Christian ministry, if you, find, if, if you go and look up this word ministry in the New Testament, there's a couple of words for it, uh, Greek words. I'm not going to try to uh, say them or pronounce them. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm not a theologian. Um, you can see Pastor Robert if you want to know how to pronounce those Greek words, okay? But there's two, there, there's two kind of forms of this word. The first form is to serve. And so Christian ministry is service. You guys aren't going to like the second one. The second form of this Greek word for ministry is not only to serve or service, but to serve as a slave. Now, some of us are like, that's not fair. Why do I have to be enslaved in service to do ministry? See, in the New Testament, ministry is seen as service to God and to people in his name. But this is cool. This is the good part, or the bad part, that God gives us a choice. God doesn't force you to serve. God has wired you. God has given you the power of the Holy Spirit. God has given you gifts and talents and all these things. And he says, here it is. Use it as you see best. He doesn't force us to give our life away in helping. He doesn't force us to be Christian ministers and slaves in service. He doesn't force us to do that. In fact, we could, we could live a totally self-centered, narcissistic life. And to be honest, some of us do. It's all about us. What can I gain? What can I get out of this? We live our lives for ourselves our own interests, our own needs, our own possessions. We don't really think about other people. Now, I know that there's leaders of homes in this, in this room, and I know, that, um, I know that there's a lot of times that we could, you know, kind of package our ambitions as, hey, I'm, I'm taking care of my family. I want to I wanna do right for my family. But deep down inside of you, in us, in me, is this feeding of an ego, feeding of pride, And God will give us this choice. And if we want to, we can live a very self-centered life. But listen, if we do that, we'll miss out on the greatest blessings of life. John 13, verses 15 and 17, Jesus says this, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I've done. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, listen, now that you know these things, God will bless you. For doing them. So Jesus left us this example to follow. To serve others. This is the key to the greatest blessing in our lives. To serve others. And this is the key to fulfillment in our lives. Are you feeling unfulfilled? Are you feeling like you're missing out on something? I would challenge you to get into service of other people. You and I are wired this way. God wired us this way. And when we do it, it's the greatest thing in our lives. Listen, it's the secret of significance. You want your life to be significant? You want to walk, you want to wake up every morning with purpose? Serve others. How many of us want happiness? (laughs) Happiness. Happiness is found in service to others. Fulfillment is found in service to others. Gratification is found in service to others. It's being what God made us to be. But it's a choice. Romans 6.13 in the NIV says, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. When I read that, I, I was... I kind of got emotional a little bit, and and maybe this will resonate with you, is that I was dead in my sins. I think about my life, and I think about where where I've come from and what I've experienced in my life. All 
on my own. I mean, I've made choices, bad choices in my life, but uh, uh, I was a, I'm a high school dropout. I was strung out, broken. I was completely dead. I was, I was, with, uh, I was with family yesterday, and it's, it's a great time. I would encourage you to take opportunities to spend time with your family. It was a beautiful day. Uh, we were out at the park, and uh, I have my, my niece and my nephew from Arizona here, uh, and we were there for... We were there for, uh, for, for a baby shower, and it was, and it was awesome, and uh, we're sitting there, and one of my aunts uh, was there, and uh, she's getting a little bit older, um, but we, we have, you know, I have a ton of childhood stories with her, and we we're just kind of reminiscing, and I was thinking, and then I had my daughter there. My daughter's 24 years old, and um, try not to get emotional here. I was thinking about, we were talking, and... Um, I had my daughter when I was 16 years old. I was strung out on, on methamphetamine speed. And I was a horrible dad. I was a horrible dad. I was a loser of a dad. And as I was sitting there, I was just thinking, like, I don't deserve, I don't deserve the mercy of God. I was singing that song this morning. I'm just like, my gosh, I'm getting emotional. And I think about this, that in the scripture, that God has brought us from death to life. We were broken. We were of no use. You were a burden. You, were, you weren't a contributor. You were dead in your sins, but God has taken us from death to life. I was blown away by that. So he goes on, Paul goes on, and offer every part of yourself now from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him, Christ, as an instrument of righteousness. The Living Bible says it this way, give yourselves completely to God, every part of you, you want to be tools in the hands of God to be used for his good purposes. And so let's look at three things real quick about this one verse Number one, God wants to use you for his purpose. It, doesn't ma- it does not matter your talents, your skill set, your education level. doesn't matter. God wants to use you for his purpose. This is what we say around here. We say we're just ordinary people, right? But by, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God puts his extra on our ordinary. We become extraordinary. Or we're very just natural people. Right? I, I don't have eloquent words. I'm not gifted uh, like, like many other people. Just natural. But the Holy Spirit empowers me and puts his super on our natural. And now we're able to walk in the spirit as supernatural beings. God wants to use you for his purpose. Second thing is that you could be a tool in the hands of God to make impact on this world. God could use you. God could orient you in a certain place, in a certain circle of people to make impact in this world, and God wants to use you. God has a a unique assignment for each and every one of us. I can't do what you could do. God has called you. God has has gifted you to, to, to fulfill your purpose, not my purpose. God's gifted me and called me to fulfill my purpose, and so each and every one of us have a unique assignment in the kingdom of God, and only you can fulfill it. We could be a tool in the hands of God to make an impact in this world. How many of us believe that? Do you believe, do you really believe that? We need to live our lives like that. The last thing is that it requires sacrifice. There's that word again. You thought I was over with it, huh? There's that word again. It requires sacrifice in order to be used by God, in order to fulfill his purpose. There are things that we're going to have to give up. Listen, nothing is accomplished, nothing significant has ever been accomplished without sacrifice. Most people say, I love God. How many of us love God? Amen. Amen. Most of us say, I want to serve God. Less. There's a few, few, <laughs> there's a few less people saying that. That's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. But this is my question. Are you willing to sacrifice for God? 
Yes, I love God. Yes, I want to serve God. But will you sacrifice for God? Are you willing to lay aside your personal ambitions, your dreams, your goals? I have dreams, I have goals. There are things that I've set aside for ministry. I've made that choice. I, I, my prayer in, in, for, for my family is that we would be used as vessels of honor to be filled by his glory, to be used for his purpose. That is my prayer. I mean, literally, uh, just about daily, just about daily, I pray that, God, that you would use us to be vessels of honor, to be filled, to be filled by your glory, and to be used for your purpose. Me and, me and my children, my, th- this, is, this is our life. So are you willing to set aside all of these things instead of living for your career, your ambitions, your desires? Set them aside to live for God's purpose while we have time here on earth. Say, I'm going to live the life that God intended for me to live. Are you willing to give yourself completely to to his purpose while you're living in this world? That's a question that you have to ask. Now you're, you're sitting there, you're probably saying like, Pastor Isaac, you're just like way overboard here. Like you, you've just kind of fallen off. Like what do you mean I'm, I'm supposed to set aside all these things for, for God and for service and, and for ministry? What, what does that mean? We all know the scripture that, that Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of God and then all these other things will be added. See, sometimes we get that backwards. We say, all right, God, that feels good. That sounds good. But I'm going to handle this stuff over here so I can set myself up to be able to, to serve you, to be able to do what you want me to do. i got to get these things in order first. You understand that responsibility. You understand that. Get these things first. Get these things in line. And then I'll be ready to serve you. C.S. Lewis said this, Pastor Omar uh, mentioned this, and I love it. He says that the only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. The only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. What does that mean exactly? That means that if Christianity, the way that we understand it, by the Holy Bible, the good news, that Jesus came and died for us, he was resurrected, and that we have hope of glory eternally with him. If those truths are not what you live by, are not your conviction every single day, if it's anything less than that, then it's meaningless in your life. Those are things that we just can't water down. We can't step those things down a little bit. The only thing in Christianity, uh, the only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. So this is really it. You're either all in or you're not. It's that simple. You're either all in on this stuff or you're not. There's no middle ground. There's no fence. We talk about the fence. Stay away from the fence. Get off the fence. You're either all in or you're not. We're talking about a life of sacrifice. We're talking about all these different things. So the question is, why should I do all of these things? Why why would I do all of these things? Why would I set aside my own personal goals and my agenda, my, my ambitions, my desires? Why would I do all of that? And I, I think I have just three simple answers for you. The first answer is because God did it. God did it for you. God did it for me. He already did it. See, God will never ask us to do something that he hasn't already done. He modeled this for us in Christ. The ultimate example is the sacrifice when God sent his own son, Jesus Christ, into this world. He left heaven. He came to earth, went through all the torture of the crucifixion, died naked on the cross like a criminal. See, no one will ever sacrifice more for you than Jesus did. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Let's put that picture up of, of Mikey. This is how I soften you guys up. <laughs> Mikey. So me and my beautiful wife, we have four children. I love my wife so much. She's awesome. She walks on water. Uh, she holds down the fort. Um, beautiful. I'm blessed. I tell people all the time that I married up. We have four children. Mikey is our baby. So I'm not saying he's my favorite. 
He's just a baby, okay? Those of you that have babies, you understand what, that, what, what that's like. So as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, uh, think about this. Can you imagine giving up your child? Let, leave that picture up there, please. Can you imagine giving up your child for somebody else? Think about that. Your baby. How many grandparents are in the room? Grandparents. Yeah, think about, how about your grandchild? Oh, you guys are like, <laughs> you guys are ready to kill me. I saw that. <laughs> think about that. Can you ever imagine giving up your child for, for anybody? Now let me take it a step further. How about, can you ever imagine giving up your child for someone that you don't even know? Take it a step further. How about for someone that hates you? Christ gave up his only son for you and I. Can you imagine doing that? It's like inconceivable. Like you just can't wrap your head. It's insane. And this is the scandal of grace. This is the scandal of grace that God loves you so much. That God values you and I so much that he gave up his son for us. Genuine love is always sacrificial. You can take down the picture. We say this, we say this comment around here often, and it sticks with me. Uh, we say, uh, you could give without loving, but you can never love without giving. You've heard us say that? Say it again for you if, in case you're writing it down. <laughs> you can give without loving. So there's a lot of people that, uh, philanthropists, right, that they're, they raise money. I mean, they might, have, they might care, um, but, or love. It just depends, right? I mean, how often do you, uh, you know, throw some change into some fund or, you know, round up for something that, like, you don't even know what it's about. You're just like, okay, yeah, I think I'm, well, yes, sure, right? So we could give without loving, but we can never love without giving. Love pulls generosity out of us. Love pulls something out of us. Hebrews 9.26 says, Christ came to take away all sin by sacrificing himself. Ephesians 5.2, live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice for God. So if you want to be, if you want to learn to live your life like Christ, you're going to have to learn to sacrifice. If you have no sacrifices in your life, there's no love in your life. Just reflect on your life. What are the things that you've sacrificed in your own life? What are the things that you're holding back on? I'm not giving that up. See, we learn to sacrifice for God's purposes because he did it for us first. The second thing is that I sacrifice because it's what God has made me to do. See, each and every one of us, we're, we're made to live for God's purposes and not, not our own. He's purposed us and he's planned for each and every one of our lives to serve in his own purpose. We're here to serve God's plan and not, o or not our own. And as long as we keep on saying, like, I have my own ideas, I have my own plans, we're going to be frustrated. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. See, God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of our lives. And that plan involves ministry and helping others. I have an illustration. So I have a piece of wood, and for those that are online, you might have to come a little bit tighter on the shot. But I have this piece of wood, and I have this screw. You guys all see that. How many of you have ever used a butter knife? <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> right? And so if I have this screw here, and I take this butter knife, and I try to, it, you see that? In fact, like, you know, Rene Robles would be able to do this, <laughs> but, not, but not me. But 
Have you guys ever tried that? And, and what happens is, like, the tip of the knife starts to bend and kind of, like, you have to throw it away. It's, it's, it's of no use. Yeah? It's because you're using, it's not, this is not its purpose. Its purpose is not to drive the screw. So, okay, so, all right, let's see. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, my tool. Yeah. Nobody tell my wife that I, I'm working on tools because she, she's going to expect a lot out of me. <laughs> so I got a screwdriver. I got a screwdriver, right? So if I took the screwdriver and I try to screw, I got a Phillips screwdriver and I try to screw this hex screw, no action. You hear that? It's like, you guys hear that? I'm going to strip that. I'm going to mess it up. Because that's not its purpose. But when I got the right tool, right, created for its own purpose, whew, come on. It's like, it's like butter. Like, you see that? When I have the right tool, created for the right purpose it's effortless this is my word to, to you this is in closing I have too much I, I'm not going to get through it all this is my word to you many of us are frustrated many of us are bent out of shape like that like, yeah, like that butter knife you're all messed up you, you, you feel like you've broken things up to a point where you can't even use it anymore. But I'm here to tell you that if your purpose, if you align, if you position yourself with God, God will give you purpose. And as you're aligned in this perfect, unique, we call this like the Kairos moment, this divine opportunity, you'll be effective. Your life will be significant. You'll make impact on, your, on those that are around you. I'm here to tell you that God wants to use you. Yes, you. You think that I'm talking about like the religious people, the people that come to church all the time. No. God wants to use you right where you're at. Where you're at in, 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 in your life, doesn't matter if your life is jacked up, doesn't matter. All God is looking for is obedience.